book, but this book was so cute. I, I, f I could feel like the crisp, cold autumn air, spooky forest vibes. Why are all the parents dead in all these books? I wish I had saved this for autumn. Hi friends, welcome back. I don't know about you, but I am very much in the mood for autumn. I want autumn to come right this second, but seeing as it is only mid-August, I will have to settle for creating an autumn environment. <laughs> so I put on my least hot autumn sweater to channel those autumn vibes, and then I've gathered some of my favorite autumn books that just kind of have that fall aesthetic I guess and I'm gonna share them with you so these are my favorite books for like an autumn reading experience and I have a ton of books that I want to get to this autumn maybe I'll make a separate uh, video about that but this whole shelf you see behind me is all of the books I have not read yet so um, I'll a lot of those I know are autumn themed so I'm gonna have to dig into those but as I was gathering these books up they're right here beside me which is why I'm pointing at the floor everyone I picked up was like oh I really want to read this again so that's really gonna interfere with my <laughs> list of books that I haven't read yet that I need to get to if I start rereading all of these but let's go ahead and get started okay so first up I put all these books into different categories, so just checking the notes on my phone. Put them into cozy, spooky, that's my dog, <laughs> witchy, academic, uh, autumnal, and classic. So those are the categories I've kind of divided these books up into. So we're gonna start with cozy, and we're going to start with the one that I actually do not have. <laughs> All of these I have physical copies of, except for this first one, which is Legends and Lattes. I listened to this on audio, which is why I don't have the physical book, but this book was so cute. It's about an orc. She is tired of battling and killing, and she's been saving up her money because she wants to retire and open up her own coffee shop. She visited a coffee shop on one of her campaigns and just felt like it was this magical experience, and she wants to recreate that in a small town that she's found. So she go, she hangs up her weapon, she goes and she starts working on opening up this coffee shop and getting to know the people in the town. There is a little bit of a mystery going on with a item that she acquires at the beginning of the book, but um, it is a really cute and just cozy and low stakes story and just has all the autumn vibes of the coffee shop and just you know that cozy atmosphere where you're getting to know new friends and getting like recreating a found family so definitely recommend legends and lattes for an autumn read and i do know that the second book in the series although i think it's technically a prequel is coming out in november i think it's called bookshops and bone dust so if you read that this fall, then you'll be able to jump right into the next one. Anyways, that is Legends and Lattes. All right, next up in the cozy books category is A Far Wilder Magic, and this one I do have a copy of. This was one of my favorite books from last year, and I think I talked about it in a video about that. But it is about a, there's two characters, a girl and a boy. The girl's living in this house that's kind of falling apart. Her mother has left. Um, she doesn't know where she is or when she's coming back. And the boy in the story is um, trying to become an alchemical apprentice and he has failed at all of his past apprenticeships. So this is his last ditch effort. He wants to seek out um, the girl's uh, mother to become her apprentice, but obviously she's not there when he arrives. And um, they end up teaming up to uh, find this mythical creature, the last mythical creature that exists in this world. Um, it's a special hunt that's going to go on for it and if you win this hunt you'll get a bunch of money but more importantly to Margaret is that by killing this creature she will gain an alchemical secret which she hopes will help um, encourage her mother to come home. And there's a little bit of like a cozy mystery to this as well. Um, Wes is trying to find out what happened to Margaret's family. She's very closed mouth. She won't talk about it um, and why her mom has disappeared off somewhere and has left her daughter alone at home. Um, so yes, very cozy, very autumnal vibes. Like 
I, f I could feel like the crisp, cold autumn air um, as I was reading this book. And most of it takes place in this house that's kind of slowly falling apart and in the forest behind the house. So it just kind of has that like cozy vibe because you're, you know, you're mostly in a home or going out into this forest that's like kind of part of the home and the land. And I really enjoyed it. Okay, so up next is the spooky books. And when I say spooky, I mean mildly spooky because I am not a horror girly. I cannot handle horror. I can barely handle thriller because I just get so stressed out. But these books had that horror element, but they weren't like too scary. Um, so this is The Bone Houses. It was a delightful story, even though it features the undead. Um, it's about a girl, her parents have um, both died at this point. She has two younger siblings that she's trying to take care of in their family home. And their family occupation is there, the town grave diggers. And there are, um, there are people that died that do sometimes come back as the undead and they, you, they find them wandering around the forest, so it's very dangerous to go out into the forest. But she is at risk of losing her home and losing the graveyard due to some choices of a different family member. Um, so she's trying her best to hold on to those places um, and to take care of her brother and sister. When a mysterious map maker shows up in town and suddenly the village is attacked by a large group of the undead. Um, so she and this new person who have showed up go off on a quest to find out why these dead people are suddenly attacking everybody, where they are coming from, and um, how to stop them. So that is your story, and it has the very spooky, like it's got the spooky forest vibes, the small town vibes. Um, definitely a good autumn read. Okay, next up in the spooky like I said, spooky category is Belladonna. This book was really surprising to me. I wasn't sure what to expect going into it, but it covers so many genres. Um, it is romance, it is Regency, it is mystery, it is horror, um, it is gothic horror, it is thriller and um, new adult. It's just, it's got almost everything in this. And I feel like it did a good job. It didn't feel like it was all over the place. Everything felt like it fit um, well. The main character, her name is Signa, and her parents die at an early age. Oh, why are all the parents dead in all these books? <laughs> Just realizing that a lot of books, the main character's parents are dead. But anyways, her parents are dead. She is passed off from relative to relative. Um, she is wealthy, but she hasn't received her inheritance yet, so. Her relatives are taking her in kind of with the hopes that they're going to get their hands on some of this money, but each person that takes her in ends up meeting an untimely end, and then she is passed on to the next relative. Um, at the beginning of the story, she's kind of on her last relative. That doesn't go well, and she ends up being transferred to a very distant relative, the last people that she knows of that she could live with and she is trying to bargain with death who is a person in this book that this family does not meet an untimely end also that she can finally belong somewhere she's very lonely and she just wants her people <laughs> so she goes there and there's a mystery there the mother of the home died and it appears it may not have been due to natural consequences as they thought and there is a ghost in this story there is she does have to work closely with death to try and figure out this mystery and kind of forms an interesting relationship with him and yeah it was just really it was really interesting very entertaining i am looking forward to the next book which i think actually comes out this month. I think it comes out in like just a couple of days. So if you want to pick this one up, the second book will be ready for you um, after you finished it, which is great. All right, and the last book on my spooky list is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is my very first uh, Neil Gaiman. I've only read one, no, I've read two books by him now, but this was the first one that I read. And it was a great introduction. The writing is so um, beautiful 
and it's about a young a man who visits his childhood home and wanders down to a farm that was down the street which has a pond and remembers his childhood friend Letty who told him that the pond was an ocean and then he kind of is transported back to that time and starts remembering things from his childhood that he had forgotten and just some different events that happened to this little seven-year-old boy and how he interpreted them to help make sense of his story and what he was going through. It's wonderful, it's spooky, there's definitely a menacing vibe to it and I really recommend it. I literally wrote in my review, I left a review on Goodreads for this and I literally wrote in the review, I wish I had saved this for autumn. So. If that doesn't scream you should be reading this autumn, I don't know what does. All right, the next book is in my witchy category and this is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. It is about a girl who is in modern Britain. She is very lonely, she's also an orphan. She was raised with strangers. She can't hang out with other witches um, for reasons that will be explained in the book. But uh, she, in an effort to find some sense of community, she starts a YouTube channel where she pretends to be a witch, even though she really is one, thinking everyone will just assume she's pretending. Which is true for the most part, but one person figures out her secret and invites her to this home that no one can find unless they're invited there uh, to help train three young witches with how to control their magic. And she heads there with some hes hesitation, she's not sure how that's going to work out, but she ends up kind of finding a found family aspect and it's really beautiful and cozy and lovely and just all the good chill vibes. Um, there is a little bit of a event that happens that puts her relationship with all of these people at risk, um, but otherwise very cozy and very uh, witchy autumn vibes and I definitely recommend it. Okay, my next witchy book is The X-Hex. This is about a girl so in the past, she had a bad breakup with her boyfriend and while she's like having her pity party and, and getting over him, she casts a curse on him and she doesn't think it's going to work because it's very half-hearted and she used like a scented candle. Um, but he revisits the town several years later and all of these accidents start befalling him. And at the same time, all of these mysterious like magical events are happening in the town so she and he have to work together both break the curse that's on him and also figure out what's happening with the town and it's really lovely very cute i would say it has very what's that channel called hallmark movie vibes but like halloween version uh, the town is is a halloween town like the like the main downtown street is just full of shops that specialize in stuff for halloween so halloween is like their big event every year um, and it, it was just lovely and cute and like I said, very lighthearted, very much like a Hallmark movie and I recommend this one. Okay, next up is the academic section of books. So these are like the dark academia type books. Uh, this first one is called Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo and the second book actually is already out. I think it's an incomplete, in, not incomplete, incomplete series at this point. Second book is called Hellbent. I've read both. They're very good. I really love the series. When I very first started this book, I was like, what am I reading? And I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it, but by the end, I was hooked about a girl, Alex. Her, she was found as the sole survivor of an unsolved multiple person homicide. And no one is really sure quite what happened or how she specifically survived it. Um, but it turns out that she can see ghosts and communicate with them. But She's not supposed to because if you communicate with them then they tend to harass you and not leave you alone. But anyway, she can see ghosts. So somebody at Yale figures this out or finds this out um, and they recruit her to come to Yale as a student. So they just, she didn't apply, they just accept her into the school so that she can work for this secret society that deals in the occult. This society is seemingly harmless, they're not, you know, doing anything bad or negative until a girl ends up dead. And then Alex is trying to solve the mystery of what is going on this, in this secret society that is resulting in um, this tr in these tragedies. I, 
I think there's more than one person that dies. I can't remember. It was really good. Her relationship with her mentor was really cute. How, how she formed some new friendships, also very cute. And then also very dark. There is darkness in this book. So maybe look up trigger warnings before you start it. But anyways, Ninth House. Okay, my next book in the academic section is called A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. It is part of a trilogy which is all completely out so you can read the whole trilogy now. You don't have to wait for any more books, but I love this. The heroine in this book is so sarcastic and kind of has a dark sense of humor and I loved her. I think some people that drives them a bit nuts. So they might be put off a little bit by her character, but I really love a good sarcastic uh, personality. So she was perfect for me. Basically, I don't want to get into too much detail because there's a lot going on, but it's basically Hogwarts, but all the students are being killed by monsters and there are no teachers. So yeah, A Deadly Education. I recommend you check it out because I really enjoyed it. All right, so now we are into our autumnal category, which these are just basic autumn vibes. Um, my first one, this is the epitome of autumn aesthetic in terms of all the books I've recommended so far. I feel like this one is the most autumn, and this is called An Enchantment of Ravens. I believe I also may have included this in my favorites video from last year. It's so short, like it's not a commitment at all. It's a standalone book. It is about a girl who is a painter. She paints portraits. The fairies, they I mean, obviously live in the fairy world, but they visit the human world to buy human craft. And one of their favorite things is to get their portrait painted by the girl, I think her name is Isabel. And she paints a portrait for the Autumn King, which he then takes home. But he comes back one day, super angry, because she has accidentally or purposefully painted emotion into his eyes, which has gotten him in trouble at home. So he whisks her away to the fairy court to explain herself, basically. And on once they arrive and on their way to fairy world, they start getting attacked from multiple angles and they have to basically work together for their mutual survival. And it's just a story of how, how they do that and how their relationship grows and how she tries to find her way back to the human world and it's very good and it's it's not a huge commitment that's one of my favorite things i feel like we need more standalone fantasy books because some of those books are getting real long and those series are getting out of control and it's nice to just have something you can pick up and have a complete story in one book okay this next one isn't like technically an autumn book but it definitely gives me like the autumn vibes like this type of story that I would like to read in autumn and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I believe this book is the Target special edition but this book was beautiful. I loved it. I cried at the end. The end was like not your typical ending which I appreciated about a girl who she's living I think in the 1700s in France and she is being forced into a marriage that she does not want and so she makes a deal with death to basically live forever and to get her out of this marriage but death as a i don't know takes something from her in return and that is that she can live forever and travel and learn everything she can and experience all of the experiences but no one will ever remember her and so it creates some very interesting situations for her through the years until one day she meets someone who can remember her and then that sets off a whole chain of events. But it's beautiful. I loved it. I definitely recommend it. It's just a little bit different than anything I've ever read and I really appreciated that. Okay, so my next book is A River Enchanted, which I believe I also referenced in my favorites from last year. A lot of these are favorite books, so I really do uh, recommend them. This is a duology and both of the books are out so you can finish the whole series at one time if that's what you like to do. It is about a young man named Jack who is asked to come home to his, the island that he grew up on by the current leader Adara I believe is how her name is pronounced. She is like his childhood rival. They don't really get along but she's asked him to come home because girls on the island have started going missing 
and the island is ruled by that these like mysterious spirits and the spirits represent the four different element elephants elements like earth wind fire and water and the only way to communicate or get these fairies or mystical creatures to communicate with them is through music. So she's asked him to come back because he is a student of music at university to play the music they need to play to be able to communicate with these fairy creatures to try and figure out if they know what is happening to the girls because the girls are just disappearing under what seems like would be magical circumstances. Um, it is very like Scottish vibe, Scottish-like plaids that are enchanted to like help keep them safe and it's very beautiful. Uh, I really love, there's several different characters whose perspectives are explored and I really love all of them and it's just a wonderful book and very autumn aesthetic and I definitely recommend. All right, and the last one under the autumnal category is this book called The Wishing Game. This is not a fantasy. This is like a general fiction, but I picked it up from Book of the Month just on a whim because it's got books on the cover and I love reading books that are about books. So I picked it up and I read this actually really recently and it was so wonderful. Um, it's about a young woman. Her name is Lucy. She has fallen in love like not in the romantic way but in the parental way has fallen in love with this young boy who is seven i believe he's seven years old his parents both tried died tragically and he's in the foster care system and she wants to be his mother so badly but she is just a like school teacher's aide and so she doesn't have enough money to be able to adopt him or to foster to adopt him. And then some circumstances occur and her favorite childhood mm -hmm. author is doing a um, competition at his home, which is on this mysterious island that no one ever gets to visit. And so she, because of some circumstances in her past, is invited to participate in this competition. And if you win the competition, you have you're going to have the opportunity to make a lot of money, which is what she needs to be able to adopt this little boy. So she goes off on that adventure to try and make this dream of hers and the little boys to come true. And it's just, it has the magical vibes. It is set in autumn. It is set in Maine. So it's got that very crisp, cool air. You have to wear boots and you have to wear, you know, your sweaters. But it definitely, it really reminded me of Willy Wonka how all of these characters show up from different backgrounds and Willy Wonka is like trying to weed out which of them has the most um, honest intentions and that's kind of the game that she's playing in the book and it was it was just beautiful it was mysterious it had that air of mystery you don't learn about her past until towards the end of the book and it really just kind of ties everything together and I definitely recommend this, especially if you are a fantasy, if you are a fantasy person and you want to kind of dip your toe into some general fiction, I feel like this is a good place to start. Definitely recommend. Okay, and the last category on my list is the classics. So I have two classics to recommend that are very autumn vibed. I feel like a lot of classics technically could have autumn vibes just because of the Kind of academic nature of classics and autumn is like to me is i feel like is a very academic season because it's back to school um, or starting a new school like college but the first book i have is persuasion i just own this pretty little gilded copy but i tend to read this on my kindle most of the time i have a copy there i love this book i've reread it multiple times this is a jane austen and it is my absolute favorite jane austen I picked it for autumn because it's set the setting, the time of year that it is in is in autumn. Um, her, we go, we start with her and her family. Her father is having to rent out his country home to retrench because he's gotten into some debt. Um, so he needs to to make up some money differences somewhere. So he decides to rent out his home. So they're all leaving, and and him and his 
other daughter are going to Bath and, she, and Anne is going to go visit her married sister for a little while. Anne is kind of regretful, I guess is the right word, because as when she was younger, maybe like 18 or 19, she was in love um, with this young man and her motherly figure, her mother died and she had a best friend and this best friend has kind of looked over her friend's daughters and this friend convinced her that she should not marry this man, that she would have some other opportunity to marry someone who would be a better fit, mostly in status and wealth. And this young man was not very rich, nor was he um, like nobility in any sense of the word. And so she was talked out of marrying this young man. It's been several years now and she really regrets not marrying this young man and hurting him by, by telling him she couldn't. He is now renowned. He is, I don't remember, a captain or an admiral in the Navy and it just so happens that the people that they rent the home out to is his sister and her husband. So she, he ends up coming back into her life and then he's very obviously bitter about what happened as well and then things kind of transpire from there. This book probably out of all of Jane Austen's book has the most satire which might be why I love it so much. Um, but the love letter, there is a love letter in this book that is the best love letter you will ever read. Um, so if you love like the letter trope, I really recommend that you pick this one up. Okay, and you might be able to argue that I have saved the best for last because this is my favorite book of all time. I mean, if someone asks me what my favorite book is and I have to give an answer, this is the one that I choose and this is Jane Eyre. It's a type of story that I don't think if someone had told me the synopsis, I would have picked it up thinking, wow, I'm going to love this. It is about a orphaned girl who is being raised by her aunt. Her aunt is very cruel to her. She goes through a lot of really unfortunate and difficult things as a child, which end up making her into a very free spirit as an adult and someone who really values themselves. So she really values herself and standing up for herself, but she's also kind of introverted and meek. But she ends up taking a job as a governess for a man and his ward out at this big like castle-like building called Thornfield Hall and she ends up falling in love, but she discovers this terrible secret of the home and then she has to choose whether she is going to make the choice to stay with the man that she's fallen in love with or if she's going to make the choice to stick to her own values, her own moral code and stick with choosing her. And it's so good. It is like if you like gothic story, like gothic horror-esque stories, this is this is amazing. Like the gothic autumn kind of undertones of creepiness vibes are all there. And the story has some really good messages as well, some really good themes. Um, I recommend you look into that before picking this up. But anyways, I am planning on reading this again. I bought this uh, paperback copy so that I could annotate it. I don't do annotation um, because it just looks like so much work, but if any book needs to be annotated for me, it's this one, so I'm going to give it a try. But anyways, that is it for all of my autumnal book recommendations. I hope that this gets you in the mood for fall and that maybe together we can pretend that autumn is here for a couple of weeks until hopefully the weather cools off and we can experience autumn for real. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!